The white fronted goose, speckle belly, tar belly, bar belly, laughing goose. That's five, five names of my favorite goose. And today I've got five important things that all speck hunters should know. These are things that I've learned over 33 years of hunting them. I'm Joel Strickland, and this is Surviving Duck Season. Thanks for watching Surviving Duck Season, where we feed your waterfowl obsession and help you to maximize your hunting experience. Now, I shot my first speckle belly goose 33 years ago, and that was the beginning of my fascination for them. Uh, the white fronted goose, also known as the speckle belly, is an awesome bird and one of my favorites to hunt. And on this video, I have five important things that I've learned that I'd like to pass on to you. Now this is not a deep dive on speckle bell hunting tips or anything like that, but these are some things that will help you to be better at hunting them. Uh, if you want to see more speckle belly calling and hunting tips from me, just let me know down in the comments. Also, make sure to stick around to the end of the video. I'll give a shout out to the winner of last week's giveaway. Okay, now on to speckle bellies. In the winter of 1988, I was duck hunting with a couple of friends in a flooded bean field in Arkansas, and a single goose was flying in our direction towards our duck hunting spread. Now, I had a snow goose call, and I just pulled it out and squawked on it, and then the goose answered me. It didn't sound quite like a snow goose though, but I was young, hadn't hunted a whole lot, and I just imitated what he did as best as I could with that snow goose call, and it came right to us. We shot the bird, and when I picked it up, I said, wow, that's an immature blue goose. Well, I learned a little bit later that day that it was actually an immature speck. Well, over the next year or so, I encountered several small bunches of specks and recognized their unique call. So I sought out to buy a speckle belly call. And this is the call that I bought. It's made by P.S. Olt. It's a very simple call. I couldn't really do a lot of fancy stuff on it, but I really didn't know I needed to. At the time, a basic cluck and a simple yodel was all I needed to do to bring the birds in to me. It was actually pretty easy. Back in those days, we didn't use speck decoys and we never set out to only hunt them. There just weren't that many around. I actually didn't start using speck decoys till about 2008 or 9, because at that time we were starting to see really good huntable numbers of them. Fast forward to 2011. By then, I was a full-time guide with Cypress Crossing Duck Club. Now, we had a significant amount of specks in our area, uh, growing more and more every year. And I was always killing a few speckle bellies in my blind just about every day while we were duck hunting. I had a half a dozen floater speckle belly decoys that I'd had from a few years before that I started taking with me. And it definitely improved uh, getting the birds to actually finish uh, when I put those out. At some point in there, we started hunting them in afternoons on dry fields with layout blinds and full body decoys. How about that, boys? The wintering population of geese in our area kept growing each year, and so did the hunting pressure, which made it more difficult to get our birds. Now, right next to the lodge, we have a rest area that gets a lot of geese, and so I began listening to what geese sounded like on the ground. I tried making those sounds with my call, but I just couldn't get it, my call to do what I wanted, not with my ult. So I began experimenting with different calls. I got this Riceland call right here. It's an acrylic model and use it for about a year or so. It definitely helped me. Then I got this red bone. Uh, this one is the big dog and it really upped my game because after I learned how to blow it, I was able to do things that I had never been able to do before. Then last year, I got this call from Galen Powell of Steel Rain Custom Calls. Now it blows very similarly to my red bone, which I like, but it has a different tone. So what I do now is I use both of these calls interchangeably. I switch them out and use them just about every day. So that's the short version of my speckle belly journey. 
And because of the wintering population explosion of specks in Arkansas, my hunting skill has improved tremendously. And the reason for the increase that we've seen in the speckle-bellied geese in the last 15 years in Arkansas is that the birds normally would winter in Louisiana and Texas are now staying further north with the majority of them wintering in Arkansas. And their numbers are also increasing in other states further north too, states that really never had many specks. Speckle bellies are early migrators. Most nest in northern Alaska and far northwest Canada. They stage in late summer in Alberta and Saskatchewan with the majority leaving Prairie Canada and flying south in October. Uh, we get them in Arkansas, Texas, and Louisiana you know, sometimes in early October, and the majority of the birds we see, we have well before Thanksgiving, way before, you know, our duck season even opens here. Uh, I can remember as a kid sitting on a deer stand in October, listening to the speckle bellies migrate over and sometimes even getting a glimpse of a few flying, you know, over early like that, but they would always be going to Louisiana. Times have changed and now we're getting them in Arkansas. So where are the majority of specks hunted and shot? Well, Oregon and California shoots the bulk of the ones that fly down the Pacific Flyway. Uh, then in the middle of the country, the majority of the birds are wintering in Texas, Arkansas, and Louisiana. With Arkansas shooting the largest number of birds, followed by Texas, Louisiana, and Mississippi. And in Canada, virtually all of the speckle bellies are shot in Saskatchewan and Alberta. There are virtually no speckle bellies in the Atlantic Flyway. I think they shoot less than 100 most years. Now, states on the rise for specks. The Dakotas, Kansas, Missouri. Where have you shot a speckle belly? Let me know in the comments. Here are my top five most important takeaways from 33 years of hunting speckle belly geese. Number one, the call is very important. It's the key to everything. You can forget many things and still have a successful hunt, but not your call. When I first started waterfowl hunting, I learned very quickly that I could get geese to come to me even if I just had duck decoys out if I called like a speck. And what's changed over the last 30 years is that your calling is even more important and you must sound very realistic or it's not going to work. Back in the day, all I had to do was yodel one time and here they came. Now you need to have a large repertoire and call at the right time to finish your birds. Number two, hunt them over water. I'd much rather hunt a speckle belly over water. I don't need as many decoys and I can hunt both ducks and geese at the same time. Uh, it's the way that I learned how to speckle belly hunt and I still am way more consistent if I can find a spot where they're using water than I do when I'm on dry field hunt. Let's do it. Indy. Woo -hoo -hoo. That's what I'm talking about, boys. Back. Man. You know what we call that? They call that synchronized goose killing. <laughs> Number three, layout hunts on dry fields are also a very effective way to hunt them. Your hide will make or break you. Now, if a group of birds booger on you uh, and you're certain that nobody has moved, then it's most likely going to be your hide. It's possible that it could be your decoys, but it's probably your hide. So, don't wait for another group to come in and booger on you again. Get up immediately and fix your hide. Then, if the birds come in and they booger again, then it's time to figure out what's going on. And the next thing I do is adjust the decoys. Number four, never hunt a great spot with wrong conditions. Now I realize that not everybody can just wait to the next day or pick another spot to hunt. You may have limited access to where you're gonna be hunting, but in my experience, a bad wind for a location or a bad hide can result in a goose egg instead of a goose limit. Now I will normally hunt another spot and wait for the right conditions rather than blowing a sure thing on an otherwise good day. Number five, speckle belly goose is the ribeye of the sky. Actually, it's more like beef tenderloin, but either way, it's absolutely delicious. 
Uh, it's nothing like Canada Goose or Snow Geese. It's definitely one of my top wild game meats to eat, not just waterfowl. And I've had just about everything that you can possibly try from North America and quite a bit from Europe and many species from Africa. So why does that make my top five list? Well, because even though I'm a hunter at heart and there are so many things that's awesome about hunting, so much thrill in the entire experience, at the end of the day, the original reason for hunting has been food. And as we continue on the tradition of hunting way beyond the point of it being a necessity, I find that it's not just that I'm eating a bird out of respect or a novelty, but out of true enjoyment. If you want to see a great speck and mallard hunt, check out this video right here. Congratulations to Wood Duck 76, Tim Cochran, our winner of a Surviving Duck Season t-shirt from last week's video. Thanks everybody for participating. I'm Joel Strickland. God bless, and I'll see you on the next video.